right behind this sign is the train and the Maggie Mine Tour. And when you come out of the mine tour, you end up up there on top of the actual mine itself. Welcome to the Maggie Mine, one of the most historic in Southern California. Before your journey into the mine, we'll give your eyes a chance to get accustomed to the dark as we give you a mini education on the type of minerals Calico is famous for. We use black light in the showcase to highlight what would otherwise be pretty bland looking materials. Modern miners use ultraviolet light to sort specimens, but in the glory days of the Maggie Mine, only the sure knowledge and experience of a miner could find pay dirt in high grade ore. Look at the rainbow of color sprinkled over the samples in our showcase. The red and green specks are a roll mine. Each red spot represents calcite, and the green color there reveals the presence of zinc. Those blue samples are shelite which tells the miner he has tungsten ore in that rock. You'll also see a sample of silver ore that brought prospectors to Calico in the first place. Also that necessary mineral for the atomic age, uranium. The tunnel or drift you're standing in was dug in 1880 by two brothers expecting to find silver. After drifting more than 500 feet into the mountain without finding any sign of color or silver ore, they quit the claim. Later on, a 10-year-old schoolboy found a chunk of ore on top of the hill above us, and a fresh claim was staked out. Digging where the silver specimen had been found, $65,000 in rich ore was located. Since the pocket was only three feet from the wall of this drift, a hole was broken through the side of the tunnel, and ore was hauled right through the entrance. Now, if you keep to the right as you go down this tunnel, this will take you to Dead Man's Drift, where you'll see more of the Maggie Mine diggings. But no claim jumping now. So this is the Maggie Mine, the only publicly open mine that you can go to here at Calico. Others are just entirely too dangerous to go into. There's a lot of open ones in the desert that there's actually signs on the road to stay out of. But if you look, this really looks like the Calico Mine Ride at Knott's Berry Farm. You see a lot of similarities between this and the Calico Mine Ride. Here's an ore chute. And it wasn't uncommon for these tunnels to have exploratory tunnels that go off to the side that end nowhere. I've been actually in tunnels like this in real ghost towns and out in the desert. And you actually walk and then you find you're at a dead end because they didn't find anything. So this is Dead Man's Drift. This is the end of this tunnel. So this is the deepest portion of Dead Man's Drift. You can see early miners is hard at work seeking that elusive silver bank. This part of the Maggie Mine was given the name Dead Man's Drift because no mine timbers were used to support the roof and walls. This drift was cut through solid rock, and in more than 100 years of use, it's nearly identical to the way it looked when it was first blasted out of the mountain. Notice the unusual wooden pipes in the background. They carried water to various parts of the mine and throughout the town. Wooden pipes were all that could be used because of the high mineral content of the water. Metal pipes would decay much too quickly if used in a mining town like Calico. Well, when you're through enjoying this part of the Maggie Mine, just retrace your steps to the main drift and then turn right around the corner. Continue down the tunnel to our famous glory hole. Watch your head and be sure to keep an eye out for silver nuggets along the way.
So this is the glory hole of the mine, $65,000. A massive ore bucket you see was hoisted up to the surface for emptying, since at this point in the mountain, it was closer to the top than it would have been to load up the ore and move them out the main entrance of the tunnel. So here is the glory hole, much like Knott's Calico Mine Ride has a glory hole. Much as we can see here, but we're actually gonna go up the steps. So we'll head up the steps in just a second. The figures inside the log ride and the mine ride at Knott's have been updated the past few years with new animatronics from Garner Holt. But these are very similar to what you would have seen inside the Calico Mine Ride and the Timber Mountain Log Ride before those animatronics were added. I will say it is significantly cooler in here than it is outside. So we're actually standing on top of the mine that we were just in on top of the mountain. This is the Maggie Mine Glory Hole. And near this spot in 1882, a schoolboy found a silver leaning rock leading to the discovery of the $65,000 glory hole. Now, people were very resourceful back in the days. This little house is built into the side of the mountain. As you can see, there are several. There's some over there. They just took an outcropping, put up some walls, built the door and bam, there was a house. If you're interested in the attractions, then I'll put all the prices down in the description below. The Maggie Mine was $4. There's also Panning for Gold, and there's also a Haunted Mystery Shack, very similar to what Knott's used to have. But you can do a combo ticket for the mine, the Mystery Shack, and the Panning for Gold. And then the train is separate. But if you go on the Maggie Mine, the majority of it is completely flat. So if you have accessibility issues, there shouldn't be an issue. You can come in the front door. The very end to get out, you have to go up a flight of stairs. If you're unable to do that, you just backtrack the way you came in and it should be accessible to most everyone. But I would uh, just confirm that when you walk in, if you do have an issue getting back up those stairs to get out.